For the uh, fourth Sunday of Easter in year A, the uh, first readings from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, Peter speaking on the day of Pentecost, and um, it concludes they were convinced by his arguments and they accepted what he said and were baptised. That very day, 3,000 were added to their number. After that, uh, the responsorial psalm has the response, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The second reading talks uh, also about uh, sheep and shepherds. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The gospel reading from John about Jesus as the shepherd. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice and one by one he calls his own sheep and leads them out. So plenty of the uh, shepherd imagery. And also uh, on the front of the catechism, we have, have this image from a, from a catechism um, showing a shepherd with a pan pipe and a sheep uh, there on the front and holding the shepherd's staff that, of course, the bishops uh, carry. So uh, looking at the uh, 2015 homiletic directory, the headings um, Christ the Shepherd and Gate, Pope and Bishops as Shepherds, Priests as Shepherds, Conversion, Faith and Baptism, and Christ an example in bearing wrongs. To go through the, uh, the recommended catechism paragraphs, um, 754 comes under the heading Symbols of the Church, and the Church is, according, is a sheepfold, the sole and necessary gateway to which is Christ. Uh, the Church is also the flock, uh, which God himself foretold he would be the shepherd. And uh, the sheep, are even though they're governed by human shepherds, are unfailingly nourished and led by Christ himself. And Christ is the Good Shepherd and also has the title Prince of Shepherds. He gave his life for his sheep. Uh, 764, coming under the heading, The Church Instituted by Christ Jesus. So it talks about uh, the seed and the beginning of the kingdom, uh, the little flock of whom Jesus came together around him, the flock whose shepherd he is. And they form Jesus' true family. 2665 has the heading prayer to Jesus and it talks about different titles of Jesus and it, it includes uh, the Good Shepherd there amongst those titles. 553 talks about being a spe specific authority to Peter and saying after his resurrection for Peter to feed my sheep. 857 talks about how the church is apostolic and goes through different ways of that and it, it concludes with uh, talking about the taking from the Roman Missal, the preface for the Apostles, number one. Uh, you are the eternal shepherd who never leaves his flock untended. Through the Apostles you watch over us and protect, protect us always. You made them shepherds of the flock to share in the work of your son. That'll be the older Roman Missal translation. 861 is a quote from Lumen Gentium and it talks about uh, the bishops as being successors of the Apostle. 881 talks about uh, Simon Peter having been made the rock of the church, given the keys and also instituted to shepherd the whole flock. 896 uh, talks about how the good shepherd ought to be the model and form of the bishop's pastoral office. 1558 talks about how Episcopal consecration um, confers with the office of sanctifying, also the offices of teaching and of ruling that bishops take the place of Christ himself, teacher, shepherd and priest, and act as his representative. 1561 talks about how a mass uh, celebrated by a bishop is particularly important, with him representing Christ, the good shepherd, the head of his church. 1568 talks about all priests being part of an intimate sacramental brotherhood. 1574 talks about uh, the bishop's ordination and the, uh, uh, the ceremonies that uh, go with that ordination. Uh, talking about some of the symbolism of them, mentioning in particular the crozier to the bishop as the sign of his apostolic mission to proclaim the word of God, of his fidelity to the church, the bride of Christ, and his office as shepherd of the Lord's flock. 874 has the heading, Why the Ecclesial Ministry? And it talks about Christ being the source of the ministry in the church, um, and how that in order to shepherd the people of God and to increase its numbers without cease, Christ the Lord set up in his church a variety of offices which aim at the good of the whole body. 1120 talks about the ordained ministry or ministerial priesthood being at the service of the baptismal priesthood. 1465 talks about how in the sacrament of penance the priest is fulfilling the ministry of the good shepherd who seeks the lost sheep. 1536 talks about the sacrament of holy orders being the 
uh, sacrament of apostolic ministry and it mentions the three degrees, the episcopate, presbyteriate and diaconate. Next the recommended paragraphs are 1548 to 1551 which come under the heading in the person of Christ the head. 1548 says it is Christ himself who is present in his church as head of his body that the priest by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders acts in persona Christi capitas in the person of Christ the head. 1549 quotes St. Ignatius of Antioch of the bishop being typus tuo patros is like the living image of God the Father. 1550 has that the presence of Christ in the ministry is not to be understood as if the latter were preserved from all human weaknesses. 1551 says that the priesthood is ministerial, uh, that it is a service. 1564 talks about the role of priests um, and saying that they are consecrated in order to preach the gospel, to shepherd the faithful, as well as to celebrate divine worship. 2179 talks about a parish. It's a definite community of the Christian faithful established on a stable basis within a particular church. And the pastoral care of the parish is entrusted to a pastor as its own shepherd under the authority of the diocesan bishop, quoting from Code of Canon Law there. 2686 talks about ordained ministers as being responsible for the formation of prayer of their brothers and sisters in Christ. They are servants of the Good Shepherd.